again and welcome back to another studio vlog. My name is Megan, I'm an illustrator and handcraft artist, and this is my YouTube channel where I do art-related things. In this video, I decided to do a Q&A because a lot of y'all have mentioned you like my chatty voiceovers and I kind of feel like I keep on making the same video. Like I craft things and I make the earring and then I talk about the earrings and then I talk about clay and then I scroll, you know, I just feel like it's kind of repetitive at this point. So, you know, maybe a little Q&A can switch things up a bit. So throughout all the time-lapse crafting portions of the video, I'll include a little question here and there to, you know, keep you on your toes. One of the first questions I got was what is the funniest thing spicy has done i don't know if this is a funny thing rather than just a rude thing but i got her a pink fluffy bed because i was just like i want i want her to have a nice thing to sleep on and it was super soft and i thought it was really cute and since i bought it about two weeks ago she has not slept in it once she has not even sat in it she hasn't even tried it out she has slept on everything but that bed, in fact. She has slept on the back of my backpack, multiple boxes, various tables, uh, my own office chair that I'm sitting on right now. <laughs> so yeah, she, she, she actively avoids that bed at all costs. I even tried putting catnip on it, okay? I tried to use the resources at my disposal and she ate the catnip really quickly and then just went straight on avoiding that bed, so. That was just something that was just like, are you trying to spite me? And we all have our preferences, it's okay. But when she slept on a crumpled paper bag that wasn't even fully propped up, that's when I knew she hates me. Shout out to Vicky. I'm done painting everything. So I'll show you what I did today. These two are a special for a trade with Tiffany. And then these are all of my strawberry toasts. And then these are the froggies. Hmm. Bye, Jeannie. And today I'm finishing up my earrings. So I have to do the glazing on my earrings. And normally today would be the worst day ever because I'd have to take out my respirator and my lamp, sit by the window and like huff all these toxic fumes. Today is the first day I'm going to be using my new glaze, which is the Patty Sealer Super Gloss. I haven't tried it on earring charms yet, but I have some high hopes. I think it'll be okay. This is the sticker that, um, Tiffany sent me and I, I love it so much and it took me so long to figure out where I wanted to put it because I was just like I wanted to put it on something that like I'm gonna use forever because I want this sticker to last forever so I put it on my computer and I'm so happy every time I open my computer I'm like oh my god there they are Hey, we're in a crafting segment so you know what that means it's time for another question <laughs> so another question i got is what is something that makes you happy i really like this question thank you for asking it um i'm not sure lately i've been waking up in the morning just feeling really happy and i feel like i'm in a much better mood than i typically have been the past couple months and i'm not sure what's really the cause of that maybe it's just mindset maybe it's because i'm going to therapy and meditating more but I just wake up really happy and I think a part of it is also I'm just excited to do the work I normally do nowadays which is working on my shop and my art and things like that and I feel like I've had a mixed relationship with work in the past because I've always felt like work is something that shouldn't be fun and you shouldn't find any joy in work it's supposed to be it's, it's work for a reason but now I feel like I wake up and I'm really excited to paint my charms and I'm even excited to film my YouTube video I'm excited to draw and I have a part-time job too and sometimes I even get excited to do work for that so I think I'm finally at this point where I'm realizing what kinds of work that I like doing and where I want my path to be in the future. Yeah I'm just really lucky to be on this path in the first place and yeah I'm, I'm very grateful. I thought I would give a little uh, insight into my planning because I used to not plan my shop updates at all but now a lot of thought 
is going into it. So I use Notion at the top. I have a, it's called like a Kanban board. You kind of just click and drag and I get to see visually things that are going on. So these are things I still have to do in progress and completed. Then I have my shop update plan. I made this in the very beginning because I kind of just slowly plan out what I want for my shop updates. And then here's my earring production table. I have all the names of all the earrings. I have the number of them that I'm gonna produce. I have whether they're sculpted, painted, glazed, assembled. And then I have a reservation with folks' names and the ones they wanted, as well as the price. I have a little drop down of general reflections and musings, just me doing my little plans. This is something I have to complete. I wanna have a stock of all my shipping supplies. And yeah, I finished up all of the charms they're all done glazing my method for glazing them is i glaze one side let it dry flip it and do the other and this was the same method i would use for uv resin but i think the patty coat is more liquidy it's less i feel like the uv resin is very thick and the patty coat is very thin so when i would apply one layer it would sort of drip down and then as it would drip down onto the bottom i think that would start to dry and i don't know if this was making any sense the bottom of the charm would sort of get glued to uh, my table. And then as I was lifting it, it would rip off a bit of paint. So a lot of my charms have little bit little paint chips. And typically when this happens, I will discount the earring. I'll, I'll probably take it down like $5 or so, especially if it's not a hugely noticeable imperfection. And I try not to be too nitpicky too, because sometimes if there's a tiny little fingerprint somewhere, I don't want to discount it because it's a handmade item and I'm I'm recognizing that I'm not a robot and I can't make charms that are perfectly flawless, you know, but I do think a paint chip is a bit too much for me and I wouldn't be comfortable selling that at full price. I basically just repainted over the chips and then glazed over again and that added some more time, but it's really a learning curve when you're using new material. And now it's like 4.30. I'm putting on a Paloma video. I'm gonna start assembling these earrings. Just pulling out the craft supplies, you know what that means. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm so annoying. Radia asked, I would like a spicy interview. I would as well. I wish I could put her up to the microphone and let her just talk and meow, but she's actually napping right now. Uh, but something that did happen with Spicy Day is she peed on my sister's bed. So I woke up at 7.30, I was ready to have, you know, a very peaceful morning and Spicy peed on Julia's bed. So we had to run to the laundromat and it was very chaotic. And we're kind of wondering the reason for that. And we did a bit of research and we think it's because the kind of litter she's using, which is the pellet kind of litter, is retaining a lot of that pee smell. So we're assuming that she doesn't really like that. So we tried to switch to, I think it's like clay clumping litter, like a different kind of litter. And the minute we poured it out into a new litter tray, she peed in it right away. So I think she likes it, but I'm not sure she's used to it because she stuck her paw right onto the clumping litter and it got stuck in her paw. And then chaos ensued as we chased her around the apartment, trying to get these granules out of her paw. And she even hissed at my sister. It was more of like a, a bark but it was definitely a sign of discontent. So she's she's had a long day, I would say, and she's, she's resting now. It's not perfect, but it's a huge improvement. Another nice question from Radia is, how do you personally pass time in quarantine when not making art? 
This is a very tough question because I feel like I spend all my time making art. Um, this is hard because beforehand, you know, in the before period, I would hang out with my friends and I would walk around, I would sit outside, I just vibe because I went to a liberal arts school and the campus was gorgeous. So we would just be on the grass vibing a lot. And we had a ceramic studio on campus. Well, I guess that counts as making art. But I think I would just have a lot of things to do when I was talking to people and meeting people and hanging out. But nowadays, I kind of feel like all there is to do is work, which isn't true, but I do think it's very easy for me to pass time through working. And it's hard, you know, we've talked about this before, the lines between hobby making and art and monetizing your hobbies can get really tricky. But I think lately, sometimes I'll just sit on the couch with Julia and we'll watch TV. We've been watching a new anime lately. And I also love to crochet and knit, which I guess also counts as art making. <laughs> okay, I'm finally done. So many toes. These are the pair I took out to photograph. And then here are all the long distance relationship earrings. I varied the bead style. Some of them have pink, some of them have clear beads. So many of these. It's like two weeks of work. Some of my original, this is some of my older designs. This is the best brand Rome earrings. The special apple cheeks limited edition ones. And lastly, we have these froggies. I also switched up the beads on these as well to just see what people like the most, but some have pink and green, some are clear, and then I think some are all green, yeah. These are 39 pairs of earrings. Today I'm gonna take my time and also finish doing all my listings because that actually takes a while. I also have to make special listings for those who reserved in the past, but should be fine. All this admin, admin stuff. It's a little, um, a little crochet frog I made, spicy, and I think it's really cute. It's like ugly cute, you know? Got a tiny little body, and I put it right here. So while she's snuggling, she can have her little friend here. But I'm just gonna put the earrings down right here and take the picture. Look at that, and that's gonna be the picture. I mean, it's gonna be edited a bit to make the shadows look a bit less noticeable and the color is a bit more vibrant and true, but yeah. I have to use this camera to photograph, so I'll check back in after I'm done using this camera to take pictures. Yeah, 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 yeah. wait, no. If I stop moving, she'll... <laughs> Go! I got my stamp! Wow. Ready? Wow. And ta -da! So thank you, Studio Maggie. It's been a long time trying to decide whether I should get the automatic or the one where you have like um, like the rubber stamps where you have the stamp pad, but I decided to get this one because you can do it faster and it's less work to reroute. But the, so the thing is with the rubber stamp, you get like a kind of a better payoff with the design, but this is more convenient. So you press the, there's definitely, no, bro, you turn it over and you just push it. down and it automatically locks in. That's good. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. I should go. How do you get it to pop out? Wait, let's see how it looks like. It looks really. It should come out like that. <laughs> well, what is little... what is this? Is this That's a, cap? a storage cap? Yeah. It said push the stamp down automatically. It locks into the storage cap. So yeah, it comes out. Hey. Mm. Oh, hang on. So here I am again to talk about my stamp. I wanted to upgrade my packaging a little. It's kind of a better opening experience and add a little bit of aesthetic to my packages. I thought a bit about stickers because stickers are not only a nice way to add a bit of look to your packages, it also functions as tape, uh, which is really cool because you can just seal it like that. I was kind of back and forth about the added expense of ordering stickers because I don't have a sticker machine at home and I don't have a color printer, so I can't make them here. Yeah, it's also extra stuff packed to the package and sometimes stickers are made from plastic, so I was like, ah, adding more plastic. I think in the future I might look into more eco-friendly stickers, but for now I was thinking about stamps because stamps are from ink, so there's no extra paper or plastic that are added onto the actual package. So I got this from a seller on Etsy. I'll leave the link down below. It just says thank you Studio Maggie on it. Oh my 
my god, it's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> yes, that's gonna go on all my packages and my envelopes. If you order sticker mail, you're gonna get this little thank you studio Maggie on it. I hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube yesterday, which is really, really wild. I. I did not think I would get to this point so soon. I kind of told myself, yeah, I'll just regularly post YouTube videos for like a year or so, and then maybe I'll approach that mark. But yeah, the, the numbers are truly going up. But I try not to think of it in those terms. I'm kind of thinking like more people are seeing my videos. I get to reach more people and connect with more people, which is really cool. And yeah, the past few months, I've, I've met so many cool, interesting, and like kind people through my art. And we engage with each other on Instagram. And I've done art trades with really cool people and I feel very, very grateful that I have this support and y'all have been so receptive to my videos and my art. I don't know, we get imposter syndrome very often here, even though I wouldn't like to, but that does happen to me a lot. Sometimes I'm like, I didn't go to art school and like, I don't, I'm not qualified for this and like so many more talented people than me. I think I have to learn to be confident in myself and my skills and you know, I, I worked for this. <laughs> so I, I am really proud of myself, but I'm also very grateful. As a lot of you know, I started this off making TikTok Animal Crossing pins and now I'm here making a bunch of earrings and things that really resonate with me and making comics that I like and people are engaging with me. So yeah, I just feel like I've grown a lot the past few months and my art has grown as well. And it means a lot that people are noticing that growth and people are supporting that growth. Thank you. Okay, hey, we're back to the Q&A. Uh, I got another question. The story behind Spicy's name. This comes from an artist I really like called Kara Kanani. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. Uh, Spicy was adopted during the fall period and the adoption agency named a bunch of the cats fall named cats. There was Spice, Pumpkin and stuff like that. And yeah, she was Spice and we just called her Spicy instead. And These are some designs I made because I want to make a Lunar New Year lino cut and I'm kind of just planning out how I want it to look. This is also another possible, basically I just want a cow, an orange, and one of these. I don't know how to say in English, but you know, it's like a, it's just like a gold thing. <laughs> My diaspora is showing. Um, it's, it's just a symbol of like prosperity. All these things are prosper prosperous and fortune symbols and I'm going to finalize it on my iPad. Got another question that said if I wanted to make earrings, how would I go about that? Supply, tutorials, etc. I've been thinking about branching out my content a lot more because I feel like my studio vlogs, I'm really afraid of them getting really repetitive and y'all just watching me do the same thing week after week because a lot of what I do is very similar. So I wanted to make a how I make clay earrings video that's similar to how I make my clay pins video and just be super in-depth about process, supplies, and tutorials. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. You will see a video from me very soon, a very in-depth tutorial. Another question is related to earrings. It says, how long in hours does it take for you to produce a batch of clay earrings and how much has the hours changed from your very first batch compared to the recent batch? Ooh, great question. This is tricky because I'm really bad at timing myself. Sometimes I'll try to write down the time I start, but then I'll forget to stop keeping track. I'm just really bad at keeping track of the time, but roughly, hmm. And depending on the amount of earrings I produce, because my very first batch, I only made six pairs, and the last batch I made 39. So there's gonna be a difference time-wise in there, but I've also been improving. So yeah, this is tough. I think for my first batch, it probably took around 10, 12 hours because I was figuring out painting. I was figuring everything out for the first time. And then recently, I think it would, I'd say it was about the same time, maybe 15, 20. I know that sounds like a lot, but it adds up because sculpting takes a while and then you have sanding all the pins and then painting them takes, you know, almost a whole day. And then comes the glazing and the assembly. So I would guess 15, to anywhere between 10 to 15 hours, but I'm gonna time it and hopefully maybe include that in my next video to give you a more 
uh, accurate portrayal of how much time it takes me. But yeah, I definitely have improved because I'm learning how to do things in more of a assembly line fashion and that's definitely sped up the process. Made by Malin, one of my favorite artists, asks, your favorite art medium? I think I would have to say clay. I really like ceramics, as I've said before, but I am trying to branch out. I've been working with polymer clay, but I, my, my love really lies with ceramics, I think. Oh, it's very faint. All right, this is Artist Proof 1. I still think it's very cute, but yeah, it needs more ink. I think it might have to do with um, the amount of water I'm adding or the amount of water on the paper. I heard spraying the paper can help. I thought more pressure was the key, but I guess not. Ooh, Ooh. that one's probably the best one so far. It's the paper. So after many, many tries, um, I'm just testing the water and how that interacts with the ink. Um, I think this is the best proof so far. That one has too much ink, too much water. This one's not enough ink, not enough water. So yeah, all the tests, but I, I'm happy with this one. Thank you so much for all your questions. I hope this weird Q&A hybrid studio vlog format wasn't too hard to get through, but this is the last question I'll be answering and I'm thinking of making another Q&A because I got a lot of good questions that I couldn't answer all of them. But this comes from my friend Maisha who asked, if you could be in any animated series, which one and who would they be friends with? Which is such a fun, great question. I think Adventure Time? but maybe not all the danger. Like I don't want to be fighting and stuff, uh, but I like the whimsy of Adventure Time too. I haven't watched Steven Universe, but I feel like I, I have to watch it. But for now, I would say Adventure Time. And who would I be friends with? I don't know, maybe Peppermint Butler. <laughs> I feel like we would get up to some shit, but um, I don't know. Am I cool enough to hang out with Marceline? Probably not, but I think I would all be friends with BMO too. Like, I feel like me and BMO will be friends. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you spending time with me and hanging out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. Maybe leave a comment down below on how your week is going. Um, I would love to just chat. Please take care, and I will see you next week. Bye.